working for. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just going to hang tight here. One of these days, I'm going to surprise you guys. You're going to show up, and there's going to be an intro video. That'll even surprise me. <laughs> you guys all have to watch that for five minutes while Spencer and I powder our noses. Yes. And get pretty. <laughs> but, um... Why won't this scroll? Because you're scrolling the chat window and you got it like that. Yeah, oh, I did. It. It's, I know it's got an embedded window, but I thought I clicked on that. But you got to be over it, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, now we got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby, we got it. <laughs> All right, there I see. So did you do a lot of fun stuff today so far? Me? Yeah, you. No. I didn't get to play any chess today. That's sad. And I, Hashtag sad. I did some chores. Hey, kangaroo. Hey, kangaroo. How's it going? Um, but, you know, it wasn't a bad day. I just didn't really do anything too much fun. I want to watch another episode of Fleabag. Yeah, soon, soon I can't wait possible. to start watching that, actually. But I have to finish this show I'm currently watching. Yeah. But then once I finish this show, then I, I can uh, mm -hmm. get on Fleabag already. Yeah, in fact, last night um, when I got home from karaoke, we watched an episode. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hey, Thaddeus. Hey, Bonarici. I do. Flo yeah, Fleabag is really love funny. Fleabag. That's, I'm not a big TV person, but that is funny. And I even watched it, you know, when I got in last night. Um, oh, it's GM Benjamin Feingold. It's GM Benjamin. And GM Larry. And GM Larry. Who's higher rated? <laughs> <laughs> Who's hey, an GM actual Larry. GM? <laughs> <laughs> um, ben is at the car wash. <laughs> Definitely should be a GM Larry Christensen with that handle, right? Yeah. How dare you? St unless it is Larry. But <laughs> probably not. What probably not. Say? The fake GM and the real GM. <laughs> The Rock Obama, <laughs> also stealing a famous person's name, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I don't think I've seen you here before, The Rock, but welcome. We're just waiting on people to get here. Hey, Ben Bairn. Uh, yes, Ken West, the real fake GM. <laughs> <laughs> the most famous fake GM. Yes. <laughs> Well, I'm going to play while we're waiting. On yeah, you got a here. few people. And then we'll just uh, keep talking to you guys. I'm going to skip that guy. This I, don't know person. Sin I don't know what Sinful Dwarf is up to. Is that somebody on the stream? Sinful yeah, Dwarf? Yeah, I remember Sinful Dwarf. Okay. Now, there's. I, they challenged like before we got started. Kind oh, of. they did? Or maybe, I don't know. I th it seemed like it. Mm -hmm. I'm hey, Joa. The, the timeline confused. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. sinful. They so, yeah, I remember sinful. Play. Well, okay, so, you know, Ronald uh, 1497, uh, no, Ronald 6 1497. If you're on the stream, I'm happy to play you, but I think that you're not on the stream. Yeah. If you are, you must show yourself. Ronald definitely challenged because I get so we Yeah, I get so many challenges just when I'm not streaming. I'm not going to play those people while I'm streaming. I'm going to play people that are on the stream. Um, yay! Hey, Flaming Palm eighty one. Thanks for uh, you know staying up and watching. Yay, Flaming Palm. <laughs> My oh. username is the same as uh, Twitch username, Karen ATL yeah. Chess Club, and you can type exclam challenge. Much like Sinful Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yes. Type exclam challenge for a little hint on what to do. Hey, Titan. <laughs> oh, Titan, a, a new regular. Definitely. <laughs> Purple chess player eater. Yeah, I'm like Ronald McDonald's friend Grimace. <laughs> yeah, I remember the purple player, the purple, wait, what was it? People. Purple people, people eaters. Eater, maybe. That's what he's referring to from the, the, um, who were they? The Green Bay Packers, maybe? I don't know. It I was mean, a, that sounds familiar, but I have no idea what it's from. Yeah, it was a very, very specific, um, team like group of players they're not always called that maybe it was the vikings minnesota vikings it sounds like vikings minnesota i was gonna vikings. say vikings when you yes said the, that, vikings, it's the vikings <laughs> but it's not always the vikings i think it was like in the 70s this oh, particular okay. group of players but i'm not positive it's like the steel <laughs> curtain for the steelers like, is that a group of players yeah it was like their yeah. it was like their linebackers or whatever oh okay i think this might have been like just from like a certain time period, like a dream team type, but I'm not sure. Hey, Scott Chopa, how's it going? Oh, it's Shah 
Shach Chopa. Like, Shach Chopa? Yeah, like Shach is chess. Oh, is that chess? Yeah, and Shach is, and ch- is chess in well, German at least. Oh, cool. At least, or maybe Dutch also. Mm-hmm. I, but Dutch, it might be a K, you know. Yeah. Chess oh, chess grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> Thanks, kangaroo. Yeah, you can challenge, exclaim challenge. All right, let me stop talking and let me play. Oh, but see, you lost Sinful Dwarf. Sinful Dwarf, get back on there. You somehow yeah. went off. But he, he just reached out. Okay, I'll play you next. I'm sorry that I talked so long. I was um, distracted by that purple <laughs> people. Yes. That uh, is distracting. Well, I hate it when I can't remember something and it's tickling at the back of my brain. And that's what was happening. So I had to resolve it. I love how fast you're playing. Both mm-hmm. of you. You're both very slow, usually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get it going. Yeah, Kangaroo is my newest student, but I actually just recently have another slot open up for a new student. That's even right. newer than Kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, so if you're interested, send me an email. Spencer at ATL Chess Club. Mm-hmm. I'll mention it again you know, later when there's even more people. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, Flaming Palm is uh, throwing his hat <laughs> in the ring. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's good then. Can't argue with that. Explosive move there. C4. Mm-hmm. How's it going, PDX? Hey, PDX, Jack. You lost and... Dang. Um, 19 moves is, is pretty good, though, you know. <clears throat> Sheb Wooley had the song Purple People Eater, and the Minnesota Vikings took inspiration from that song, specifically the defensive line. Oh, okay, somebody looked it up. Hey, Chica. Yeah, it was Bonarici. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, it was a defensive, it was a certain that is subset a lot like of the, team. the uh That's a lot like the Steel Curtain. Mm-hmm. That's all, like the ex- exact same concept. Damn. I wasn't sure whether to take the G-Pawn. Seems like when I do that, I always get in trouble. But I don't see a reason not to take it. Well, if it's free, it's for me. So it's something know. to think about. <laughs> I just would, um... It does seem to be something that happens. Maybe I'll do this. <clears throat> Let me think about it. All right, but don't think too long. Oh, yeah. Do that. I just never handle it properly, never. Well. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Oh, never play that. Come on. Let's see. Oh, night move. If you're uh, <clears throat> in the chat and challenging Karen, that's too long of a time control. Ten minutes. Five <clears> minutes <throat> or three minutes. And no increment. Hmm, tough but fair. Mm-hmm. Good job, The Rock Obama. <laughs> Not sure if Karen will have time to play you, but if she doesn't have time in the beginning of the stream, we'll also, she'll also play some people uh, later, you know, at the end of our... We usually have this format where Karen plays some games, then we uh, 
we look from a book that we're studying, the John Nunn book that's in the title of the stream. Then after that, Karen will play more people. So if you don't get to play her at the beginning, <clears throat> you have some incentive to stick around. Spencer, anyone play the Alapin opening against you over the board? Yes, in fact, my most recent Alapin game was against the very talented uh, Andrew Zhang uh, from the Fine Gold Memorial, where we played. And I won it quite handily. There's actually a delayed Alapin, but to transpose to basically the most <clears throat> important line, um, where white delays white plays like bishop c4 and delays d4 and then after bishop c4 i played knight b6 bishop b3 c4 bishop c2 which is uh generally considered the most dangerous line that white can play in that opening office alpha male loves the alapin what kind of an alpha male would play the alapin come on <laughs> open sicilian if you're an alpha come on Spencer looking sharp. Job interview? <laughs> Just don't tell my boss, right? <laughs> Elon Tusk. Yeah, a great character from Rick and Morty. Even though I think he's only in the one episode, but... He crushed it. He crushed it. Oh, Shashopa is the, the night move. Yes. I saw you challenge, but it, like we, I mentioned, it was too long of a time control. Isn't John Nunn still teaching at Cambridge? Hmm. I wouldn't uh, know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. You did cut your hair and shave. Not only did I do that, Elon Tusk, I guess it's been a while since you've been here, I also dyed my hair purple. What was your op white opening of choice at the 1500 level? Uh, when I was 1500, I, I was only, fi I wasn't 1500 for very long. <laughs> I wasn't 1500 for very long, actually. It was like, I was, you know, sort of around 1400 for a while. Then I sort of blew by 15, 1600 pretty quickly. And then I was stuck at 1700 for a long time. Or, you know, several months or maybe. I remember I was stuck there for a while. Um... But what did I play? Hmm. I remember I played the Night Orphus Black, but I don't remember what I did with white. You can't tell it's purple? Come on. It's so obviously purple. <laughs> At 1700, I definitely played D4 and was playing the Queen's Gambit. Um, I remember I won a nice game. Actually, we talked about this on stream yesterday. This, I would... Uh, I would play, in, against the semi-slav, I played queen c2, g4, the Shabalov attack. I won a nice game uh, in, in, against an A player there, I remember. I think it was Jeff Aldridge. How's it going, Scottish Demon Goat? Apparently none quit lecturing at Oxford. I think that's where he got his PhD, actually, was Oxford, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> you just saw that I died it after I said yes. It's a little subtle. It's a little subtle. In fact, I was at karaoke the other night, and then I stepped outside with uh, one of my friends, Scott, and Scott was like, and it was a little brighter on, you know, on like the patio, and he's like, wow, is your hair purple? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's been purple the whole time. We've been talking in inside. But he didn't notice. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a little <clears throat> subtle. That's true. Uh, from Oxford, they call it D. Phil, not PhD. Is that like for Dr. Phil? <laughs> That'd be too funny. Probably not. I oddly have a very high winning percentage with black, but I need to work on white. Yeah, in fact, I remember reading uh, Mihai Suba's book, Dynamic Chess Strategy. And he mentioned that some strong players, they have like a... You know, they like to play black for psychological reasons. You know, they don't mind to fight against the initiative and they like to make the game messy for a win. Or they like to equalize and gradually outplay uh, the opponent. I see. So. Good. His move is pretty good. 
It wasn't the best, but it was good enough. Yeah, with the arm. Well, I was running out of there. That um, was a good game, but I saw a couple of tactics that you missed. Okay. Uh, GG Kangaroos. Sorry, I was getting wild there at the end. <laughs> I was trying to move. All right, let's go to this moment. Here you go. Mm. All right, Puzzle Rush, white to play. Um, yeah, I knew something was here, but I couldn't figure out. Oh, yeah, if I say um, Rook C8 check. Yes, deflection. Can, yeah, yeah I and just... it conveniently stops checkmate. How nice is that? Yeah. <laughs> Darn, I've got to do some more tactics. Mm -hmm. Yep, Rook C8, they got it mm -hmm. in the chat, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you got it pretty quickly, too, when I asked you. Yeah. But, yeah, of course, like, I just glanced at the position. It's the only thing I saw. Oh, I was no. talking to chat, and I looked, and I was like, oh, Rick, see, it's good. <laughs> because I do so much puzzle rush. Yeah. All right, but let's I start from the beginning. Yes. I used to do some. Yeah. Definitely got to get on that puzzle rush. Mm -hmm. So C6 is, like, a little bit, uh, um, I would say, inaccurate. And if you're a Slav player, which I think you might be with black, then you, you shouldn't play the Slav against... Uh, the London, because C4 is going to actually be like a slightly improved version of a Slav, like just barely, but basically you got the bishop out and you protected your pawn and they, so they can't take your pawn and win your pawn. I remember we were talking about this the other day, yesterday I think it was, in the Slav they like threaten to take your pawn, mm -hmm. so this makes you play E3 blocking your bishop sometimes, Yeah. or you move your bishop out and they take your pawn, but here you got to move your bishop out and you didn't you don't have to worry about them taking the pawn. So this is the best of both worlds for white. And that's why this is not an accurate move order for black. Um, but it's not that bad. You know, it's just a, like very slightly worse. Only slightly. Um, now here you should equalize with bishop g4, yeah. Now it should be pretty equal. Still, I'd be probably trying to play c4 with white. I mean, h5 is a very strange move, but it's a blitz game, so I guess it's okay. It's also weird to play h5 and then after h3, like, move your bishop away. I kind of thought the point was to let her take, and then you could do this, you know. So I don't even think that, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe she could. I like to take and play knight e5 and, and defend. I like to do that, but um, anyways, if you play h5, it's because you don't want to move your bishop, so it's kind of weird to do that. Yeah, put in an H, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, no, playing the Slav is great, yes, but uh, like I said, you know, you can't really do it against the London move order like that. C4 is good. G5 is crazy. I like it. Takes, I might consider G4 here, but okay. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. I thought H4 is just best. It's nice to move your pawn off the white square. Mm -hmm. This is correct. Now, this move probably is losing because of f6, x clam, even though never play f6. <laughs> yeah. Um, what should you do? I mean, I would hate to say f3 so because to avoid f6, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully my dad's not watching. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, G5 is was well, just, H5, G5 is just for fun, obviously. You know, you can't really think that they're the um, objective moves, but, you know, they're good enough. Uh, Queen B3 should be okay, too. Why not just counterattack a little bit? Yeah. I thought about it, but I was worried, worried about, about running away. Yeah, I didn't want to I leave, understand, leave yeah. that side of the board. I'm just so concerned with the initiative here. You know, yeah. I, I like when they attack me, I can get out of attack with the tempo. Mm -hmm. That's how you fight for the initiative. And I also want to play e4. Oh, he is here watching me talk about f3 and f6 and such. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so now probably it's a win. I mean, even just a move to trap your knight wins. Oh, I knew the map that it was trapped yeah, already. Yeah. Right, well, that's why this is incorrect. Yeah. Probably you didn't anticipate f6, I'm guessing. Mm -mm. Yeah, because that's the only otherwise your move's great. But yeah, I mean, you should because your knight is like rock solid because he played h5. The only problem is f6. That's what he wants to do anyway. Mm -hmm. That's like the only thing that can dislodge you. It's a creative try. You got to try something. You're going to lose the pawn and the knight anyway. Mm -hmm. No, I like this is the best move. 
That was a great move. Now here maybe you can throw in an intermezzo. It's a check. So you could try it. Yeah, I think I did the next move. Right, but here he could stop you. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't see, I didn't see it until the next mm -hmm. move. Also here you could consider this. Mm -hmm. Or even this and then that. You know, sure, he gets to check you, and then I'll just walk away. Or I could play knight back, because then you could just play f4. No, this should be good. This should be good, if not winning. Probably winning. Even here, you're... Okay, you lost the piece, so... But you've got a lot of pawns, at least three. <laughs> and at most. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is the the moment, the critical moment here that we talked about already. Yeah. But Only yeah, time. I mean, you're a piece down for some pawns, so it's not necessarily dead lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you gotta kick this guy away. He's too good. Just get out of here. Get out of my crib. And then this. Okay, this is time trouble. Yeah, I was blunders. Just <laughs> really. Yeah. But, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Good game. GG. <laughs> <laughs> if the London didn't exist, what would I teach Karen to play? Well, I'd probably just let Karen play whatever she wanted. Mm -hmm. But I guess Queen's Gambit. <laughs> probably. Mm -hmm. Hey, Purple Fay. Thanks for those five bits. Yay. We, thank and you, five Purple hearts. Fay. I need all the hearts I can get. <laughs> Spencer needs some love. Yes. Don't we all? All you need is love. <laughs> of course, Purple Faye is uh, donating to our stream because of my purple hair. Right? That's right. Oh. Aw. <laughs> Thanks, Market Thank Sands. Thank you, Market Sands. For 100 bits and one heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would teach her the D4 Bishop F4 opening. <laughs> That's right. I figured you'd like it, Purple Fay. <laughs> you know, I learned uh, that the word Fay means like uh, out of this world, like otherworldly, like oh. supernatural. Oh, really? And in fact, this is why th this is how uh, the the mythical creature fairies were, mm. um, mm -hmm. you know, got their name. I guess it it's, it used to be spelled. Like an old spelling's F A E, F -A -E -R -A. yeah, like the fairy queen. Yeah, like exactly. I guess yeah. Famous work. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't know that, but yeah. So that ties in. <laughs> the London system came into fashion in 1922. Yeah. Also, I mean, in in the New York 24 tournament, there were a lot of Londons. Hmm. Hey, this is Spencer. Fee is fairy in German. Makes sense, yeah. Oh, good to see you again. Uh, Ayadzi. <laughs> Ayadzi. It's pronounced Fay. F E mm. is pronounced Fay. I get you. I get you. So it's the same. Now that is tying together, right? Are we close to halfway through the book? We are exactly close to halfway through the book. <laughs> We're at like, you know, 45% <laughs> or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Enga I like how you said engaging instead of developing the night. <laughs> that must be a Nigerian term. <laughs> oh, oh! I have to answer Scottish Demon Goat later because he's seeing ads. <laughs> he's doing what? He's looking at ads. Uh, Poor Scottish Demon Goat. Come on, Scottish Demon Goat, buy that stuff. You need it. Yeah, the nun book is pretty tough, I would say. You know, for... Uh... Oh, the... okay. Then, yes, we are about halfway through the book. We're at 45% we're at or so. Mm -hmm. This looks like the London bond cloud variation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
The next book should be a step down in difficulty. Well, perhaps. We could crank up the difficulty, though. <laughs> I really, uh, you know, I learned a lot from that the Sicilian section that we looked at, just like in the other book, too. Oh, thanks, Purple Fay, for that subscription. If it's London, it's a smog cloud. That's a good one. That is a good one. Kangaroo always coming in with the puns. Well, it's not even really a pun. It's just a good joke. Let's see. What can I do? I can feel the middle game being halfway understood already. Yes. Soon you'll have a full, complete understanding. Risky. Gotta risk it to get the biscuit. Um, the move was risky. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, none said so himself. It's a lot tougher to defend in the position. I mean, this is dumb. All right, let me go over here. You still got it. You got tons of chances here. It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that attitude. Come on, Magnus would probably win. Yeah. Not definitely. Probably um, not after that move, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that move is really good. Yeah. Dang. Obviously. All right. That move is too strong. Um, Scottish demon goes, like, likes defending. No wonder you play so badly in the opening. Then you can just defend on your own. My odds that move would not help. <laughs> In this position. Oh yeah, that's true. Kangaroo's right. I have an opening for a new student. Oh yeah. So feel free to email me, Spencer at ATL Chess Club, as Kangaroo posted. Thank you for reminding me. You like defending, Goat? Are you software proficient like chess base or Fritz? Of course I am. Of course. I wouldn't be where I am without my understanding of chess base. Do we need to also dye our hair like our chess master? Well, it doesn't hurt. I mean, it hurts a little, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt your chest. Just your scalp. Unless you're, like, have blonde hair. Or, like, very light hair. I can't even leave the area here. <laughs> Go do anything. Okay, what, what waiting for me. <laughs> I don't know what you think I could do. That's true. I didn't even see it. was it. already busted at that point. I thought, I don't know why I didn't see it. Tough game there. He got you early on somehow. I wasn't looking. Yeah. Let's see what had happened. It looked like an opening disaster, which is pretty rare mm -hmm. in the London. Okay, but what does this weaken? <laughs> We have this discussion a lot. I know the B pawn. And so, how, what do we do? But uh, I was talking and reading. I have to you know, move the C pawn so I can get my Which queen over square? to attack. I think. Um, I can't remember. I don't know. C four. Yes. Good guess. But it seems, Just to attack the center. But more. there are some. There's because other, queen b3 also attacks the but center. But I'll tell you why it's confusing. It's because right. there's a different position where uh, I have to go knight d2, knight bd2. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. We and, can compare them. Yeah, yeah. So this position, black is playing bishop f5 early. Right. Thanks, Purple Fay, for your gifted sub there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Purple Fay. Um. The knight d2 thing is actually to avoid bishop f5 later. Um, oh, okay, so that's... Um, so the move bishop f5 is what's, uh, you know, the, the similarity between those two variations. Mm -hmm. But here black is already playing bishop f5, and that is, uh, that is weakening b7. Whereas in the other position, the, the bishop on f5 is like an idea for a later tactical combo. 
-hmm. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's say they did it like this. And now this is the, the variation of, that we're talking about. C5, C3. C5 is usually always met by C3 in every variation, by the way. Mm -hmm. So you can always just automatically do that if you want. And this is the knight D2 situation. You're deciding between knight D2 and knight F3. And the, okay. the reason we play knight D2 is if we play knight F3, this is the bishop F5 situation. Here attacking this, you want to answer that this way. They'll kick you where you generally would like to play this move, mm -hmm. but now it's bishop f5. Okay. And now because our knight's on b1 and not d2, our rook is trapped if they take b2. So if we take here, they'll take here, and then we're losing material. Mm -hmm. And so this is why in this particular variation, this is like the classical main line. See, black is playing as classically as possible virtually putting all the pawns in the center just developing the knight to their mm -hmm. most natural offensive post knight d2 is the answer in this exact position now if they play queen b6 queen b6 is not bad it's not really the best move and then they play c4 now they can't play bishop f5 we'll just take it for free and then they can go here okay they win some pawns but it's not worth the piece mm -hmm. and this actually might win a pawn back as we've discussed okay so that is uh, a lot different than than this because they're playing bishop f5 already. So like that has nothing to do with knight d2 okay. now. And they haven't even yeah. Yeah, they didn't do the queen, queen deal can't exactly out. exactly. Merry Christmas, Jeff Baldwin eighty six. Yeah. Um, I had Z says could transpose to queen gambit. No. Len Ricci says you have to punish black if he plays bishop f5 this yes. early. Exactly. Hit the center and grab the two bishops. Because otherwise it's too easy for them. Like, if they just get to go here and then there and develop, like, black has no problem, you know. So you okay. could cause them a little problem. You have white, you know. White can cause black some problems, usually. But, mm -hmm. you know, with accurate play, of course, black should equalize. Yeah, you can... Um, the Rock Obama... This is probably the last game before we start the Nun lesson from the book by John Nunn that we're going through. But um, I can play you first um, at the end of the stream. We should have time to play a couple of people. I mean, for example, compare Black's development with yours. Um, like, this bishop's great. Your bishop's just... You have the most passive of the four bishops. Your bishop on e2 is the most passive. Mm -hmm. And also, his knights are better than yours because yours is going to have to go there instead of there. And his pawn's on c5, so he's got a little bit more space than you, c5 instead of c3. So black's just even, like, probably a little better here. He's just so active. This is a good move. I mean, not that you should be complaining too much, because you are tempo up, so, mm -hmm. you know, it should be pretty close to equal. This move's very anti-positional move. Shouldn't do that. In fact, in the whole thing where we were talking about queen b6, queen b3, c4, white does all that to provoke c4. So you don't want to play c4. Like, without provocation. That wouldn't make sense. You want to keep pressure here so it's more difficult for white to break with b3 and, and e4. Yeah. Games before none, <laughs> zero. Funny <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, c4 is not right. If You you can improve your position in many ways. I would defend my knight so she can't double the pawns. Like rook c8 or queen c7, perhaps. Both seem like re reasonable moves to me. You could also do something like just h6 if you don't care about the doubled pawns, which you might not. Because, you know, you could trade them away. But yeah, c4 is anti-positional. That's a good move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, her light square bishop is not great, but it's not so bad. Takes here. That's interesting, yeah. Took with the pawn to get two bishops. So here is the problem. Right, c3 dropped, and then you're already busted after that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you could play it just trading the knights, Yeah. for example, and I then would castling. Have, if I'd seen that. After I, t after mm -hmm. I moved, I saw a lot of crap. I, see pawn. I, I probably prefer white here. Mm -hmm. Like, you've got the bishop pair. You've got pressure here, which is kind of annoying. Because he has to, I mean, if he ever takes, then you're super happy about that, of course. Um, but if he doesn't take, then you can keep piling on the pressure, like b5, a4, for example. 
Um, and you have the bishop pair in the long term, although your dark square bishop's not great because it's blocked, but even still, it's a long term advantage. So, and maybe it's close to equal, but I'd rather have white. Maybe the computer would disagree, but. But yeah, now after this, the problem is that you can't uh, keep the bishop defended with anybody except the king, mm -hmm. which is not acceptable. Well, that's how I ended up getting mated. <laughs> but here you could uh, survive a little bit. Yeah. This is the move. Oh, yeah. Block it up mm. and save your knight so you can move your queen without hanging it as in the game. And even take this if you if it's desperate that you need to do that, which it might be. Although I don't see that happening right away, but you know, at some point maybe the bishop is like they'll move their queen and their bishop might be good or something. I don't know. Maybe not. But yeah, now it's now it's busto. Knight b4 is a great move. Obviously, you could still pretend to fight on by defending mate like this or something. Mm -hmm. Queen a1, but K's got an extra rook, so yeah. he's going to win. Um, well, Scottish Demon Goat, I don't hate my light square bishop when I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually it's black. Black. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so It may have looked like game. I hated it because I lost it. But, right. Hater's uh, going to hate. Yeah. <laughs> it's not what happened. All right, well, we'll play some more at the end of the lesson. and um, You know what? Before we get started with the book, I yeah. wanted to talk to you about loose pieces. Oh, yeah. Because I always forget to do that. I mean mm. to talk to you about it on the stream. So let's talk about loose pieces because we've been having a discussion the past few days about it. Yeah, definitely. So I want to start, first of all, with, first of all, my definition of a loose piece. Okay. Which... I don't think that you know what my definition of a loose right, piece is. Sure. <laughs> a loose piece to me mm -hmm. is a piece that's attacked. Let me put it in the camera. Attacked and defended mm -hmm. the same number of times. Well. That's to me what my definition of, is of a loose piece. Attacked and defended the same number of times. Yeah. Correct. That's not what I saw in the link that I sent you. However, mm -hmm. it is what the link said. It is? Well, when I talked yeah, to Ben, it, there wasn't. In the paragraph, mm -hmm. like the, the link that you sent me in the paragraph, the yeah. top it says a piece that's not defended. Mm -hmm. Then at the bottom, it says, by the way, some people would say uh, that my definition. And oh, okay. Just ex so there's more, th there's more than one definition. I saying. think that my definition is more complete. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, like a piece that's... But you're agreeing there's more than one definition. Cause when I asked, somewhat, yeah. Because when I asked Ben about it, he had not, he has not heard of yours. Well, but the way that you, in the email, the first email you sent me, yeah. you made it seem like I said that a piece that's defended w only once is a loose piece. Yep. Yeah. Well, let me put it a different way, because I don't, I don't mm -hmm. remember exactly what words were using, but my understanding, and from what I didn't read all of the links, you're saying the links saying there's more than one definition out there. But what I had read before um, is that a loose piece is one... It's not necessarily attacked at the moment, mm -hmm. but that it's not defended. Right. Right. Like this knight. Um, right. Exactly. This is like the, the most, everybody in the world would agree this is mm -hmm. a loose piece. Right. So, but, so what is your definition? You have a slightly different one? Um, the, my definition includes this knight. Right. And, but it, it doesn't have to be attacked. And this is a knight that's attacked and defended mm -hmm. zero times. Right. It could be, uh, let me show you another example, like this. Mm. Like this. The knight is attacked and defended once. So I would regard that as a loose piece. I really would. And for all practical reasons, it is the same. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, if I attack that again with black, you're going to have to move it. Just like if I attack your knight here. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to move it. Right. You know, that's the point of a loose piece is that if somebody attacks it, you're going to have to react. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody like forks your, your king in a loose piece, then you're done for. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Um, ben didn't agree with, with that. But it sounds like mm -hmm. the article that I sent you says that there are two definitions. Yeah, yeah. At, at, in, in the first right. paragraph that you sent me, the, the last part, it's like in parenthetical. Yeah, yeah. It says exactly what I said. As pieces a, a that are attacked and like defended the same number of times. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, I've never, yeah. I've never heard that. I've been telling that to my students for like almost ten years. Wow. Including kangaroo, like two days ago, yesterday, mm -hmm. I, I told them. Now, uh, somebody in the chat mentioned a piece that is, like, attack. See, <laughs> a piece that is attacked more 
uh, that that wouldn't be considered a loose piece. That's, that's just a, ha- a hanging that's piece. A hanging yeah, piece. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a hanging piece. But for example, here's a good example. Let's say mm-hmm. a piece is attacked four times and it's defended three times. That's a hanging piece, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Then so that would uh, oh maybe hang on a second. Thank you for that sub, L J Gonzi. <laughs> so that would be in line with my definition of a loose piece. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's attacked and defended the same number of times. I don't care if it's zero. I don't mm-hmm. care if it's one. I don't care if it's ten. You know, mm-hmm. because for all practical purposes, that is pretty loose. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's why I, that's what I tell to my students. Right. Now there is some wiggle room. Like for example, if it's this position. Would I say that knight's loose? Would I? What, I, don't, I, don't I know. would. <laughs> to me, that to me, that's not. It seems loose. pretty solid, right? It's not loose. Yeah. In so, my like view. I said, it's like a little gray area for me, because mm-hmm. like, this piece is defended by somebody that's so much less valuable that that makes it more defended. Mm-hmm. You know, this piece is defended by a pawn, and you wouldn't take it for a queen. Right. But then again, if I attack it like with a bishop then you do have to move it because you'll lose a pawn. Mm-hmm. Well, we should probably come up with some way on this string because I don't really agree. Like, I just can't really switch over to your way, and I think the other way might be more common. Mm-hmm. So I just a way to talk about it on the stream so that we're not confused. If you're, t- if you're using it one way and I have it a different way in my head, then we should probably just steer clear of that because I'm not going to switch over just because you prefer that way. I've always read... The other way, it sounds like either way, I guess, there's some gray area. Yeah. So the main thing is we just want to be able to communicate about it <laughs> on the stream. Yeah. That's all. But anyways, I'm still going to say things are loose if I think they are. Um, you know? Okay. Well, as odd. I wonder why Ben has never heard of that. I didn't, uh, like, read that in a book. I mm-hmm. just came up with that on my own. Hmm. You know? I just came up with that on my own, basically. Yeah. Well... <laughs> we can, um, I guess when, when it comes up, which is not like a huge amount, we can just sort of figure it out at that time. Yeah. Plus, anyways, you know, I don't like to be so black and white with this type of stuff because, mm-hmm. oh yeah, you know, in a chess game, it's, it's a little bit less clear mm-hmm. generally. Well, and language is always a bit fuzzy and changes too. So I, that's one of the things I was saying I think is actually interesting just in general about different, not just chess, but uh, as is, um, it's not only the definitions, but sort mm-hmm. of the cha- the morphing of them over time too. Totally, totally. But all right, let's get on with the book then. Definitely. Oh, do, do I have to put in the names? <laughs> Spencer Hanging, what? <laughs> Urgent, says S. J. Cantorill. Cantory. <laughs> What's urgent? <laughs> All right, so. I'm going to try to really concentrate today. This stuff's so dense. Yeah, well, you should let me worry about the chat. What do you mean? Yeah, because you need to focus on learning. I am, but I you, let me worry about what I'm going to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> let me worry about what you should worry about worrying about. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to look at the chat, and that's part of, of what a streamer does. And I enjoy that. Okay. And so if it Well, does, we could just take, like, some pauses for the chat. Definitely. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I don't want you to miss it, you know. I can ask you to repeat it if I don't hear, but I like to. All right. Because also people ask questions, <laughs> and so I like to see. Right, exactly. Um, you tell them, Karen. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, Pam, how's it going? You tell her, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Ban everybody. <laughs> it's funny when Bonarici catches me. <laughs> I'm playing. Yes. And then I'll look at the chat, and then I'll like, no, say, no, Karen. <laughs> and I'll say, Bonarici, stop looking at the chat, Karen. <laughs> Bonarici and I are on the same page there. That's what I'm saying. All right, well, I'll try to try not to look as much. <laughs> All right, this is the game Stella Wagen against Nidich from Vikonse 2003. This section is called The Bishop Takes E6 Sacrifice. So we'll see a bishop on one of these two squares probably bishop taking E6. E6. Okay. In the Sicilian, specifically. Oh, okay. Hopefully it's another knight, or if it does look like it. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, Sozin. I've had this position many, many times. 
with black and a couple of times with white even. Still theory. Yeah, mm -hmm. queen c7 and queen b6 are both moves, but I always uh, found that I could equalize with queen c7 and I couldn't with queen b6. e5. Okay, I don't really know that move very well. Hmm. And now Knight H makes a mistake. H6 question mark. Is there a sacrifice for every piece on every square? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> a, yeah. few, a few important squares. Yeah, we will be sacking a piece, Pam, mm -hmm. exactly. Yay. This move provokes white into making a dangerous sacrifice on e6. Bishop c5 is correct, pinning the knight and thereby preventing bishop takes e6. Uh, in this case, the position would be roughly level. So I'll have to remember that if I ever have this position with black. Exclam. The simple knight d5 takes, takes rook a7. Bishop back to f3. Gives white a slight positional advantage. But the piece sacrifice is far more energetic. Thank you, Purple Fay 47 for those centidues. Oh, and more hearts. Rainbow Yay, hearts. beautiful hearts. It's like <laughs> rainbow unicorn heart. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes this. And knight takes a typical result of the bishop takes e6 piece sacrifice is the knight established on e6, preventing black from castling either side. If the sacrifice nets two pawns for a piece and the knight can be maintained on e6, then the compensation is almost always sufficient. In this case, white's rooks are ready to occupy the center of files, more or less, straight away. The compensation is far more than sufficient. Yeah. So, yeah, we got two pawns for the piece, right? Right, let me just look real quick. Okay, sorry. No problem. So we got the two pawns for the piece. Um, and like he said, the knight is established here. You can't really force me away. Mm -hmm. For one, I'm threatening this and also discovered attack. So, yeah, and like he said, even... In addition, now we can put easily both our rooks on the E and D files, which is going to give us a lot of initiative. Absolutely. Yeah, this looks bad. This does look bad when you put it that way, you know. Mm -hmm. Queen E7 was played. I heart energy. <laughs> Don't we all? Castle's queen side. Black's only real hope is to remove the E6 knight by occupying E5 with a piece. But, oh, in the game, he uses the bishop, while if he tries to bring his knight to e5 by knight d7 and to e5, white wins. Knight e4, exclam. Knight g7, exclam. Because the queen is uh, too busy to defend the bishop to take the knight. And then knife f5 is game over. You can't really stop it, I guess. Let me try, just for fun, you know. Here. And if you go here, I'll do that. And now I'm having a great time. I defended it pretty well, you've got to admit. But I think that my move actually allowed this, which also looks terrible. For black. I want to do some trick where I sack my queen and go check, but I can't find it. Because queen takes rook, you just take with the, you know, the king of rook. Mm. Yeah. But anyways, this looks pretty bad. I mean, even knife f5 is still strong. Knight g7, queen f7. It hangs e6 still. Yeah. e6 is hanging. That's why you can't take it. I was kind of wondering about it too, but I guess about what? Well, how the, the mate would occur. Like if they take, and then you take, then king can run off. Well, this wins the rook at least. 
Oh, okay. Also, uh, I mean, this move looks pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. <laughs> yeah. That looks Seems good. like everything. <laughs> I could, if it's Black's turn, I like white there, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So he can't quite, he doesn't have time <laughs> or resources to put the knight on e5. It takes two moves, which is just not a, mm -hmm. you can't, you know, do it. To hey, it. Jake, how's it going? Hanging stuff, always my weakness, yes. <laughs> All right, so he plays bishop e5. No, no. He actually plays king f7 first. This is move 16, yes. All right. Rook h e1. And then bishop. Move. And kick. Good enough, he says. But knight d4, just retreating and pinning the bishop in this case, thereby threatening f4, which would win a piece, is even better. Like this. So that's an important move, actually. We saw this queen h3 move the other day when it was some guy against Grandilius. Some guy won. Uh, Queen's pretty nice on e6 here. I can't remember. Or, you know, touching e6. Yeah, I forgot the other... Maybe it was Kempinski? I forgot, actually. Mm. Some guy is my favorite GM. Yeah, he's pretty good. Black cannot prevent the queen from penetrating to h5 and e6. Hey, cheesy chess. But f4 is, is also good. Karen. <laughs> Takes. And fe. So the dominant e6 knight is gone. But white's control of the central files and threats against black's king give him a decisive advantage. Queen takes. He also looks at f takes. Queen c5, x clan. Threatening queen c7 or rook d6, or both. Knight d7. Like this. This wins material, I guess. Mm. Hey, Uncle Jakey. Ah, so if takes here, we fork. So takes this. Oh, actually, he gives that, too, in the, in the sub variation. I didn't have to figure that out. Not that it was the most difficult thing to figure out, but still. This will give white an extra pawn and a large position, positional advantage, and is obviously winning. Mm -hmm. Frankly, obviously. I just want to look at that variation again. Like, he has to play king e8? I mean, I would be more tempted to go to the g-file. But I guess, yeah. I don't know. I can't really defend it on, on the king side either. Hey, I am Snake Charmer. How's it going? Yeah, all this other stuff seemed forced anyway. All right. So he plays queen takes. All right. Stop looking at the chat, chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy with the purple hair is going to laugh at this comment. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at my own reaction, not the comment. <laughs> you laughed. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Queen b6, x clam. Check. Bishop c6. That's right, the rock. That's what I said you laughed at. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you were correct. Oh, partial credit. Mm-hmm. Queen f5. If queen c4. And white wins. Oh, yeah, you can't play knight takes because the queen's hanging. Hashtag sad. Queen f5. Check. Bishop d7. King g6 loses to 92 x clam. And rook d6. Yeah, that is devastation. I mean, what about when I go here next move? Mm -hmm. Or here? I mean, this move is going to be pretty strong. It threatens everything. Mm -hmm. 
and this is threatened as well. So that's El Busto Extremo. Spencer, what is today's t-shirt? It's just a gray shirt, although there is like a tree. It's the tree octopus one, remember? Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, I've shown it. Tree octopus. It's like sapient octopus. <laughs> yeah. You think we should switch places? <laughs> What's X clam? X clam means it's a good move, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. I focus enough. You guys <laughs> worry about your own learning. Don't worry about my learning. I'm a big girl. <laughs> the immediate queen b7 was also good. After queen takes g4, queen b7 wins the rook. So, like, what's the point of g4, then? He said this was also good anyway. But I was just wondering, like, why did the guy play g4 at all? Because it's not like g4 made, a, made some defense impossible, right? It's just it's totally the same. Oh, anyways, I guess it doesn't matter. He said queen b7 was good at once anyway. Knight d5. Rook c8. And queen d6. Black has no chance with all of white's pieces converging on his defenseless king. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Mm -hmm. If king f8. Hard to believe you'd even consider this move, right? I could just win your queen. Right. Hey, or Waffles won. Mm -hmm. Trading places. Resigns. F5 is met by rookie 6 mating in a few moves. Probably uh, here. Well, maybe actually this is the best defense, because there's no, uh, oh, what am I talking about? I didn't see that. I was just thinking you can't check me here. Well, obviously it, it mates, right? You don't even have to check every move. Like, for example, I could do this. Mm -hmm. and then you can give me, like, one check. Yeah. So, I mean, Stel Stelvagen just made it look easy, right? It was like a bunch of theory, and on move 12, he made a mistake. Yay, thank you, Trying to Learn, for that sub. And how's it going? And then this was too easy for him to know it was strong. And then he didn't really play any, like, brilliant move, I would mm -hmm. say. Yay, thank you, Purple Fay 47 for the nice. two to do's. Yeah, we try, we try, Purple Fay. We try. <laughs> I mean, he even, like, at times, like, F4 wasn't even, like, the strongest move, but it still wins. Yeah, none of his moves were, like, anything that a reasonably strong player... Even, like, G4, for example, wasn't necessary at all. Queen B7, the more obvious move, is also winning. And this, and that. Like, anybody would play those moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was just too easy for him, Yeah. Oh, yeah, top 50 over 50. That's me. <laughs> Not blitz. Yes, yes. Regu you know, just uh, regular mm -hmm. rated. <laughs> right, yes, yes. <laughs> Probably just just regular. Oh, yeah, it has to one, be. It has to be. There can't be any women over 50 <laughs> that are that regularly playing. Right, a lot of blitz. <laughs> blitz, right, blitz. I have to be almost the only one in all of America. <laughs> Don't you yes, agree? Yes, I would totally Honestly, agree. Honestly, I bet yeah. there might be 10 of us, maybe. Well, that actively play like on a regular basis. Maybe, Ray the Blitz. maybe more. I would say. Maybe over fifty. Yeah. Really? I don't know. Maybe not too many more. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Let's All look right. at the next one, huh? What rank? I don't even know what my rank is right now. You know, I'll post the link in a minute. <laughs> All right. Here's everybody's favorite Rajabov against Galfand. Yeah. This is from 2005 European Team Championship. I like how every game's the Night Orf. It, it, he, I like, know. He says Is he it, obsessed it, with it or what's going on? Well, he would play the Night Orf in his day, but oh. 
And it is the best one, but still. Come on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have no idea about this line. Yeah, for a long time they even had a quote from me on the US Chess website about the list itself. It's kind of funny. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, they, they, when they what rolled it, it when they rolled out the list, there was an article. Oh, I don't remember what I said. I think I. Oh, it's great, you know, to have these lists. Well, I don't remember what I said. I love lists. <laughs> <laughs> great to be on the list. I don't remember. Anyway. This in this version of the poison pawn, which has the additional moves bishop c4 and knight d7 thrown in, White's problem is that the natural castles kingside question mark loses a piece after queen c5. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tensor Extension, for that sub. Ah, uh, yeah, see, Castle's queen side walks into the queen c5 pin, so after you save your bishop, e5 wins your knight. So that's why you can't do the normal castling in this position. The only way to justify his play is to sacrifice the bishop on e6, but this is not very clear. So this is still theory. Now he's threatening that, so king f7. The simplest way to meet the threat of knight c7 check. And f5. What football teams do you go for? <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't care about sports that much, but roll, tide, roll. I, I like the London silly nannies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he writes a long stanza here. This bishop takes e6 sacrifice is far less clear than in the previous example. At the moment, white has only a pawn for the piece. And there aren't any open files leading to black's king. Nevertheless, the dominant knight on e6 gives white almost sufficient play for a piece, and it would be very easy for black to panic and allow white's initiative to overwhelm him. Gelfand's careful defense is a model for how to handle such positions. He takes care not to allow white any tactical opportunities and gradually gets his pieces out, even if he has to surrender a pawn in the process. So I'm excited to see how Gelfand handles this because he's a well-known Nidorf player. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, you found the quote? You're talking about the quote from me? You found it? Are you serious? <laughs> I don't remember what I said. Or maybe he's talking about that's a different a, quote. That's a Trump joke. Oh, he's saying that quote. I thought he meant he found my quote. The list, folks, we love. The... Well, it's it's like a mixture of of your quote, oh. I guess, and what it's how Trump would say it. <laughs> You know, the best, Trump tremendous ask. list, oh, yeah, believe yeah, yeah. me. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Very, okay, I get it now. So, yeah, let's see how Gelfand does this. Like I said, a well-known mm -hmm. Nidorf player. Gelfand would play the Nidorf and the Petrov. How he, funny is that? Isn't this like the second game recently we've had of Rajabov, too? Or no? Yeah, I mean, maybe there have been several Rajabov yeah, games, I, was, I think. Yeah. Also, yeah, none likes Rajabov a lot. All right. Before the scandal. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> queen, a, queen a5 is a cautious and flexible move, withdrawing the queen from a vulnerable position on a3, while at the same time covering c7 and d8. Crude attempts to remove the knight from e6 don't work. For example, knight c5, that's what I was thinking actually, to just take it. Rook takes b7, check. And knight d5. Gives white a winning attack. Mm. So this is a little bit annoying because if you play like just to defend, I can fork you. Mm -hmm. Also, he's threatening to take here twice. Because the bishop will be pinned. So you kind of have to take in this case, but I guess queen takes is strong. You know, because it's pinned, don't forget. And then I can start to sneak in and crush you on e7. Take everything. Well, I'll believe it's winning. It looks pretty tough. You know, I'll believe it. So queen a5. <laughs> it's a Rajabob walking <laughs> straight. You know, you got your excuses there. We're not haters. We like to point out, you know... His, you know, things w when they're not right, but yeah, <laughs> sort of like don't, don't hate the man. You know, he should probably apologize though. <laughs> yeah. Preparing to develop the bishop to b seven. 
Exclam. Black is willing to surrender a pawn to bring his queenside forces into play. Yep, doesn't care about that. Just let me get my pieces out. Let me out. Let me out. Black slowly but steadily activates his pieces. Yeah, this looks very good. He got everybody developed. Mm -hmm. The only guy is this one, but okay. You know, that's not so King bad. King sounds snug. Yeah, snug is a bug. <laughs> Black had more than one satisfactory option. Rook takes c3. I mean, this looks, I'd be pretty happy with black here. It's just two pieces for a rook. Bishop e7 is slightly better for black. Yeah, it's two pieces for a rook and a pawn, which is better, of course, but it's it's so much reduced material that white is, is far from lost. Mm -hmm. And again, black only has three pawns, so it's going to be tough to win when you don't have so many pawns. And none of them are passed, of course. And probably worse than Hitler. No, he, you know. Not that bad. He's not that bad. I'm not Hitler's saying bad. I'm not saying that what he did, you know, was good. It doesn't matter anymore, Scottish demon goat. Yeah, we he, can move past it. He made, you know, a racist comment about Shiyu and some sexist comments about Lotez sisters. Mm -hmm. And I think he, in his mind he thought he was joking. So he shouldn't have done it. I've already forgotten about it, too, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop c4, exclam. A strong move intending to eliminate the e6 knight, even if this draws black king, black's king into the center of the board. Rook a1, if bishop d2, which I guess was one of the points of queen e1. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. He'll take it twice. Here comes a discovered attack on the queen, but here's a check. Block. Bishop f2. Move makes sense, yeah. Rook c4. Also favors black. Yeah, even though his king is on e6, you can't really get at him. You can't really get at him. I mean, you could check him, I guess, but I can even just... You got no white square bishop, and mm -hmm. your queen's not particularly menacing right now. No, it's pretty solid. I mean, he's a piece up, so. Yeah, he likes the car wash. You know, we just have two cars. <laughs> <laughs> My car gets to stay in the garage, and his stays on, on the driveway. Mm -hmm. So his gets dirty, and he likes to clean it. <laughs> I, I mean, I probably, even if mine were in the driveway, I would, you know, maybe go once a year. But that's me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> White is now struggling to find compensation for the piece. Black has developed all his pieces and stands ready to eliminate White's proud knight. Proud knight, yeah. <laughs> In fact, he's just voluntarily retreated. White's main asset has retreated, and Black can consolidate his extra material. I'd say his cars are burnt red. I'm gonna have to call it's it. It's called magma. Oh, that's his yes, real name, I magma. Remember. Because I was like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I okay, yeah, it's, I love the color. Yeah, I like it too. Mm -hmm. I like it too. I'm not even a car person, but I do, I'm, yeah, I like that color. Really good color. Mm -hmm. That's like the best part about the car. Mm -hmm. And it's a good car. <laughs> the culmination of Black's defensive play. His king at last reaches safety, and he's now ready to take over the initiative. I mean, now it just looks like a normal position where somebody's a piece down. Because his king, I mean, everything's normal for black now. He can mm -hmm. try some vague threats, but always play bishop f eight's really helping him out here. Yeah, it does look normal now. Resigns. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, right? Because here, there, here, and then we'll we'll take our pick. I like rooks more, so I'll mate this way. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot you were a rook lover. Yes, rooks are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great game by Galfan, and it's nice to see Rajabov losing. <laughs> what about rook before to fork queen and king back there? 
And it just seems so dumb. It's hard for me to stay mad about these type of things. Mm. Mm. Is it a Ferrari? No. <laughs> what what chess people besides the top you know, ten in the world can afford Ferraris? <laughs> I mean, there's no way the rook before ever forked the king, right? Because the king's here. So you got you got to get better at you got to get better at notation or something. I don't even I couldn't even figure out what you meant. Wait, which one? The fork with the knight. But you said what about rook before? Um, and then it forks the king and queen, and now it's a fork with a knight. Yeah, it's hard to note to do the notation. <laughs> That's true. It is tougher to type it because they're not normal words. Right. Like, you type normal yeah. words just out of muscle memory. Well, I'm just, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about trying to learn. How about trying to learn notation? <laughs> How about that? Hey, Surrey Crown. The Queen's Gambit brought you here. Well, good. Jump on in. In that variation I looked at. Okay. Like mm -hmm. this, maybe? Chess is fun. Well, these are already getting traded, so probably not this variation. Maybe this one? Mm -hmm. This might be might be getting on here. Check. Yeah, yeah, I still have no idea what you're talking about. Rook B4. It's not a fork on king and queen though. Oh, oh, right here, I think. He means from he means here. He means where I figured it out. It's right here. Oh. He wants to go here. And then if I take then he he'll fork. fork me. Oh, I see. Now if I don't take, he doesn't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, I just won't take, right? I could do a bunch of stuff. <coughs> you know, for example, move the rook away like this. Is that a problem? I guess there's this fork. Yeah, I still have to be careful because my king's here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got to be careful. I could double it up, but then you'll take here. But that's okay because then I could take this. Yeah. Yeah, that, I would do this. Yeah, I would do this. But yeah, trying not, they're trying to learn, rather. I would just not take, I would, you're not removing the defender, you're asking the defender to move. And then he'll just say no. Right? Um, so yeah, I would do this, then I could take you and start checking you on the back rank once you play queen takes. For example, like here. This is what I was looking at. I don't know if this is the best move. Like this. Because now I even have tricks like this. Oh no, but I gave myself a check, so that didn't work. I can't make any tricky knight move. But yeah, anyways, I stopped your threat, and now I'm just doing fine. Still up a piece. I mean, black Scott is king on e6, so that's a little tough, but... I don't know, this is still kind of tough. Maybe I could have played something instead of queen a1. But yeah, anyways, I just won't take your rook as the moral of the story. Yeah, rook takes c2 except for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Crown, there should be a bunch of tutorials on chess.com to get you going with the basic rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is tricky. I mean, there are always going to be little tricks, but black can avoid them, you know, if, if you're paying attention. But you could find tons of, you could detail analysis this for hours and hours and find more and more tricks mm -hmm. for white that black has to avoid. But he can avoid them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, homomorphic. At least none makes it seem that way because he didn't give Galfin any question mark or dubious. Galfin just played a perfect game. And this is a difficult game, too, but, you know, the guy's sacrificing a piece here, and it's just unclear. And then you have to defend with black, getting out these pieces, and your queen is on a bad square, too, mm -hmm. while dealing with this terrible knight. It's very difficult to play that way against, you know, 2750 or whatever Rajabov was at the time. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, do you want to go through another section? I mean, I'd be down. I like to definitely how come we only have 2200 um, viewers we could do that um what what's going on <laughs> <laughs> yes are we on chess tv we must be right how, i didn't even know we were on here yeah oh no uh, that's better 2300 yay <laughs> well let me double check well we have to be i don't yeah. have to look. there's no other reason for it hello chess tv this we're... would be a good time to mention that i had a student uh mm -hmm. you know drop out so yeah. i have an opening for a new student so send yeah. me an email spencer at atlchessclub.com mm -hmm. if one you're opening. interested that's yes, right. just one one mm -hmm. opening to rule them all 
I won't make Lord of the Rings references. Mm -hmm. And for those that are lessons. <laughs> <laughs> those that are new to the stream, we're going through uh, John Nunn's um, less, uh, understanding chess middle games, and we'll play some people at the end of the stream. So, what is Yay. the name of this section? This is the knife f five sacrifice Yay. in the Sicilian. Mm -hmm. What's my rate? My uh, my money rate? What you'll email me and I'll we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep it a little close to the chest, you know. Yeah. In case I want to charge you more. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, thank you, Purple Fay 47. Oh, nice. Ten cupcakes. Yeah, those are cute. Nice. Purple Fay has the best emotes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, we're not on Chess TV. I'm on an old Shocking. 2016 list. Well, I should be on the latest list. I'll have to look and see what happened. Unless my rating got bad. And right. I dropped off. The knife f5 sacrifice occurs almost exclusively in the Sicilian. In return for a piece, white usually gains a pawn, some time, and an open file. Compared to other Sicilian piece sacrifices, the compensation white obtains from a knife f5 sacrifice is often of a long-term nature. So this is a game Azarov against Joe Bava, a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. We all love Joe Bava here. And also Azarov's no joke, by the way. Azarov's a very exciting player and mm -hmm. strong player. So let's take a look at this knight orf, I assume. Oh, it's not a knight orf, because Joe Bava has black. He wouldn't play such a normal opening, right? Yeah, he goes for my dad's favorite here. Mm -hmm. Hey, Meepex. The classical Sicilian. Oh, yeah, you're just in time, GM Benjamin Feigl. Mm -hmm. We're looking at your favorite opening, and we got thousands of viewers. <laughs> yeah, I think I was just embedded briefly then. Yeah, probably. Because uh, trying to learn such canty was on mm -hmm. just TV. Goes for bishop c4. This is, uh, maybe it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a Velomirovich attack. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rock and Jason, how's it going? I played the Velomirovich attack myself as white. I remember there's a line where you sacrifice your rook, and I did the rook sacrifice, but in a different line when it wasn't as good, and I was lost, and I still won. Yeah. You know, my opponent was like 1,700. Um. <laughs> and then my dad's like, this is terrible. And I'm like, what? No, it's good. And then he was right. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the opening a lot better than I do. Yeah, a6. Is the smith mora bad to play? I've never seen c3 played there. What? Maybe well, you're talking to somebody else. But yeah, I would say the smith mora is not the best. <laughs> it's not terrible, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay, LJ Gonzi, because I wasn't supposed to be on Chess TV anyway, and a lot of times they'll just put some random streamers on briefly until the other person's ready. And so even though it's only briefly, it boosts the viewers. So it's still good. Probably Canty was running late or something. Um, yeah. Bonjour. Oh, it's Yay, Purple thank Faye you, Purple Fay. I wanted to mention that a lot of times in the structure, White will actually take this way. Not here because B4 will win a piece. Mm -hmm. But they'll take this way so they can hide on the A file. And they're like really solid with that clump of pawns. Oh, okay. But here he can't do that, and you don't always do that anyway, so. But yeah, because now, like, this pawn break is potentially scarier, I guess. Well, again, in this case, maybe not, because b5 would hang. So here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for. Knife f5. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. This idea has been known since the 1960s although theory insists that it should not give white any advantage. In the hands of an attacking player, it remains a dangerous weapon, as this game demonstrates. Like I said, Azarov's a well-known attacking player, so it's it's no surprise that he uh, is going for this. Black must eliminate the all-powerful knight on d5 as quickly, excuse me, as quickly as possible. Castling kingside question mark is wrong due to Never play f6. f4. I love this move. It, it stops knight e5. So now bishop d4 is coming. And then you're going to be done for. Mm -hmm. You're just cooked after that. Yeah, but f6 is, is obviously very scary for black in any case. So he goes for bishop b7. <laughs> Not enough draws. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, F6 when you're white is usually good. That's true. Yeah, F4 was a good... Yeah, that is harder to think of. I agree. Him totally. Totally. Yeah. A nice subtle move there. Yeah. At the end of that variation. So bishop b7 was played. F6 anyway. Doesn't take back. He's too cool for that, you know. <laughs> Anyways, if you take bishop takes, that's not acceptable. So... All right, at first sight, white can hardly have enough for a piece, especially as he doesn't have a single pawn in return. However, in practice, he has scored slightly more than 50% from this position, and even theory believes that, at any rate, white should not be worse. So this is an interesting variation. It's uh, like if it's two people 2,800 playing, they won't do this. But if you're like not a super GM, then this is very interesting. It's like probably about equal... Um, but, you know, white's down a piece for the initiative. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Purple Fay, for the one cent you do. All right, so rook takes d6. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's it's black's turn, so you can't do that. Um, but if it wasn't black's turn, then that is interesting. Rook g8. A key point is that castling kingside, which looks crazy anyway, loses to gf. If bishop takes, we can also look at knight takes check and it's still the same idea with bishop d4 lethal he says yeah pinning the knight allows us to move our queen into position as well we don't have to worry about getting captured and never mind because this is even hanging so you know you can't you can't defend everything there like if you play for example rook e8 then you can't play rook g8 which you kind of want to play both moves right yeah i'd love to play this rook there and then that there yeah, now we're talking. Save those pennies for you. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of knight takes, bishop takes. Um, again, this was not played in the game. Jobava didn't castle. Rook g1 check. And then rook h5. Threatening mate here. The puzzle rush pattern there. Since black's king must stay in the center, in any case, he at least tries to activate his rook with rook g8 instead of castling. Smart. GF. Other lines, such as bishop f4, king f8, queen h5, also lead to approximate equality. So there's still a lot of games here, at least a handful of games in this position. White threatens to win with bishop b6, deflecting the queen away. Or at least attempting to. And then if you don't deflect away, then I'll take your knight because it's pinned. So black has to take care. Rook g6, question mark. A serious mistake. Knight g4 or rook b8 are better defenses. So he, he goes here so that when you play bishop b6 x-clan, which he did, now I can move my queen. Again, I can't take and get mated in one. Mm -hmm. But I can move my queen to defend it, and then I defend it against this threat with rook g6. So that's what he was going for there. But queen f3, double attack. A double attack on a8 and f6 regains the sacrificed material, after which black has problems due to his exposed king. So maybe he missed this move even when he played rook g6. Although maybe he thought he had some counterplay, like rook c8, question mark, he gives. Uh... Yeah, bishop b6, so close to b6, right? <laughs> yeah. If rook b8 takes, takes, oh, oh, sorry, 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 my bad. Not takes there, but takes here. Queen a8, check. Rook takes and takes here. And then this. White has a definite advantage, as black will have to give up his d-pawn to unite his rooks. But nevertheless, this was the best chance. So it's possible that he was, when he played rook g6, Jobava, I mean, obviously he saw this. Maybe he saw this even. And he thought, I could play rook b8. But then at the last minute, he's like, oh, takes here. And then this is strong because he gets to take this and then deflect my king away from my queen. And then win my queen. And he didn't like this position. Because, you know, you have to play something like d5 to protect him. And now black is, is much worse. It's a queen and two pawns for two rooks which is, is usually better for the queen and two pawns. 
Um, so he played rook c8 and said he decided on that move. Now black is lost since he has nothing to compensate for white's attack. Yeah, he, white just won back the material and continues his great position. Is um, a queen in one pawn more similar to two rooms? Yeah, that's usually about the about same. The same yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, a queen in one pawn is usually enough. Like, imagine it's a queen pawn and, like, I've got, like, pawns like this, you know? Mm -hmm. And you've got two rooks and two pawns. Like, you can connect them. Then if I have, like, my king on g2, and then that's it. There's nothing else on the board. If I got my king and queen here, you can't win with the two rooks. Because if you collect on f2, like, doubling rooks on the f-file, or on the second rank or the f-file, whatever, mm -hmm. and then you take f2 and I take with the queen, then it's a king and pawn in game where we both have only two pawns. And it's a draw. Um, and, and this was... Uh, there's a famous example, it was Kramnik against Laco. Laco Kramnik game one of their world championship match that uh, Kramnik won with two rooks against the queen and zero pawns. And he moved around and around and around and yeah. around with the rooks and then eventually collected a pawn like that uh, where, where he, it was a king and pawn end game where he'd be a pawn up oh, okay. because it was equal pawns to start. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. That was who, Kramnik and Laco? Yeah, game one. Lake, Laco was white. Oh, like yeah. what, approximately what year? Like uh, Exactly 2004. Okay, awesome. Exactly I'll that year. That, if I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, is there some sort of chess dictionary with all the terms and tactics together? I don't know. That's interesting because we were debating about yeah, different meanings of a word earlier. earlier yeah. I don't know if there's an official one. I want to move the light for a minute. Okay. It's a little dark on the glass side, but I don't know why. The lighting feels pretty. Yeah, yeah, Rook G6 was like a natural move, I would say, Bonarici. And, but e you'd have to like just know a lot of theory to play this with black, I think. It, it, you can't really be. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's already, that's already a lot of theory, though. You know, like, do you have to know 25 moves of theory, I guess? That's, that's <laughs> it's tough. Right. You need Darn. the Spencer Feingold Dictionary, because nobody else knows what a hanging piece is. <laughs> it's loose piece. It's loose piece if they don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there should be a good dictionary. Now it's too bright. I'm not getting up again. <laughs> yeah. It was almost the end of the stream. All right, so Rick takes f6. Yeah, now white's lost. He goes for d5. Yeah, poor Joe Bava. He probably remembers this game, too. The complete book of chess strategy is that does that have definitions in it or something? I haven't looked in that book. Yeah. Anyway. B four. Um, with the deadly threat of bishop c five. So rook c four. You might say, what does that have to do with bishop c five, right? Clearly, it's rook e four is going to be the answer to bishop c five. That's why you played rook c four. So that's why f3 resigns. Nice. Very nice move. Preventing rook e4, and now bishop c5 is devastating. Preventing rook e4, as he says. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, I should mention that after here, you can't play f takes because your queen's hanging, so you have to check first. Then after the king moves, then f takes. And there's no defense to bishop c5. For example, if you move your king out of the way, that's mate. If you move your king, you can't move it there, right? You'd have to go here, but then that loses this too because you block your queen. Dang, f3, really nice. It, it, that's a lot like f4 in that other variation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, It's very similar. Just mm -hmm. preventing your opponent from blocking you for one tempo, and then it's over. White resign after playing f3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know your game's bad when f3 forces you to resign. <laughs> Tough. Mm -hmm. Tough but fair. Um, all right, so what do you think? One more example, or I think so. are one we more too example. close to? Um, I think another time. one. One of them. Well, he's supposed to get here around a little bit before Sally put this back on. Okay. I don't know. I think we could do another section. We don't have to always play a lot of people. Well, we still have one more example in this section. And let's definitely do that then. Knock it out. Let's set the Mac Gatorade. Just I usually prefer the door. haterade. <laughs> um, 
lock the door, said Ben can't get in. But he has the key. Ben's gone back to the car wash. <laughs> yeah, we gotta like barricade the car wash. That'll show him. Ben's car is very nice. And when he first got it, is he still on the stream? <laughs> 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 well, this is normal that when you get something new, you're kind of protective of it, and you don't want to get it dirty and messed up because it's new. And so I remember when, <laughs> one time we went somewhere, all of us in his car. It was me and my two kids. I hope he's not on the stream. <laughs> but um, true story anyway. Uh, and I guess... Some wet leaves have stuck to my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I can see where this is going. Gotten in the floorboard. <laughs> and so then we got out, and then Ben kind of made a joke, but he was complaining about the leaves. <laughs> yeah. And then I said very nicely, well, floorboards. Well, okay, I'm using the wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. What are the words? The floor. The floor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I know it's a new car. It's like a year old. But when he first got it, um, anyway, so then he was like, well, look at all these leaves. What are all these leaves? <laughs> and I said, well, I don't I said, let's just don't take your car anymore. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to have to be worried about the leaves. So then, then he never said anything else after that. So That's we, fair. Yeah, we take his car. Well, it just wasn't, it takes the fun out of it. I don't want to have mm -hmm. to worry about a stupid leaf falling off my mm -hmm. shoe on the floor. Just take my car. Yeah. My car can be jumped Full of up. leaves. <laughs> <laughs> For all I care. <laughs> Car's full of, you know, all sorts of things. <laughs> anyway, it worked out. The peace sacrifice on F5 usually occurs when the enemy king is in the center, but this is not exclusively the case. It's important to be flexible and to remain aware that standard types of sacrifice can occur even in non-standard situations. So this is the game Volokitin against Nevyednici from the Slovenian Team Championship 2006. In this typical Sicilian position, Black's king looks slightly exposed, but his solid center pawns appear adequate to keep White's forces at bay. However, there are certain factors that favor White, in particular the F3 bishop. Somebody mentioned that in chat. It might have been Bonarici. The F3 bishop aimed at Black's queenside and the centralized white rooks, which would be well-placed if the center were to open up. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Does look nice. Take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, by sacrificing a piece, White is able to exploit both the slight shakiness in Black's defenses and the latent advantage of his own position. It's like something my dad would write. <laughs> An idea 5 x clam. This surprising sacrifice activates White's forces and leads to a dangerous attack. Yep. I mean, e7 and d6 are both hanging, so he has to take it. And knight d5. That's a typical way to uh, follow up the knife f5, right? Just as in the previous example, the dominant d5 knight and pressure along the e-file form important components of white's compensation. Bishop Always game. triple the pawns. Nobody has triple it pawns. Oh, it was when it was e-takes. Oh, yeah. That's true, that's true. Yeah, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Black's moves were forced up to this point, but how does white continue the attack? Shakalaka. This is the key idea. White secures a third pawn for the piece, and at the same time opens up the D file for his other for his other rook. A little combo. If Black doesn't take rapid action, he will surely lose as the F3 bishop and possibilities of rook e7 and rook d6 will prove decisive if White gains if White is given a tempo to pursue the attack. Yeah, those do, things do look pretty good. Bishop d7 question mark. Too slow. Just like my favorite kind of high five. A down low. The only move is knight d7. Attacking the queen and the c-pawn. By discovery. Then uh, queen d6. If queen b2, knight c5, 
White has nothing better than to return to f6, since he cannot hope to press home the attack with the queen passively placed on b2, and in which case we would just be repeating the position, of course. So instead, queen d6. This stops queen c2 because it's a pin. Uh, knight c5. Like this. Leaves white with a clear endgame advantage based on his three healthy, healthy pawns and strong initiative for the piece. But at least black could play on. I mean, I wouldn't be very worried with black. You know. I'm a little worried. <laughs> I wouldn't be, like, very, very worried with black here. I would think that I could... I could hold the position or even potentially win it. But he says white's much better, and, and we'll have to defer to his opinion. And I wouldn't think black's better there, so I guess. Yeah, queen b2. Right, he could always repeat once, right? Yeah, he could have. Yeah, exactly, homomorphic. That It's because of knife f5 that tied everything together for white. That was a very, very strong sacrifice by Volokitin that I would never expect, but is, is obviously working out exactly as Nun pointed out. The rooks are great, and the bishop's great, and black's just under the initiative, and white has a ton of pawns, and black's got pawns hanging. I mean, clearly, as this, this has been favoring white. Mm -hmm. Rook d6, question mark. Surprisingly overlooking a clear win with rook e7. This is the move I was looking at. It's definitely rook e7. Something must have scared him off. Black cannot defend both... Uh, Black cannot both defend his pawns on the 7th rank and cope with the threats on the queen side. For example, rook gf8 loses to queen d4. Rook cd8, queen d5. Oh, there it is. Threatening mate. I'm just putting a lot of pressure here so you can't move anything. And if he doesn't defend this... If these pawns fall, white will have a massive five pawns for the piece with four connected pass pawns. That yeah, is a lot of pawns. Yeah. So rook d6 question mark, knight b7 question mark. Suicide. The only move is bishop e6, exclam. Mm -hmm. Little interference. When white has nothing better than rook e d1 and then knight b7. It's kind of a long variation here. It's like pretty long. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We're getting started. I mean, it's all forcing, so I guess it's logical yeah. to continue out. Hey. Reaching a rook endgame with an extra pawn. Perhaps this should be a win, but it doesn't look straightforward, as black can at least, you know, or black at least has a fighting chance to save the game. Yeah, I mean, five pawns is a lot. So it's good winning chances. And what's nice is that white can make a pass pawn here and on the king side. So white's got more winning chances the more pass pawns yeah. you have, of course. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Good. We still have a lot of viewers. This looks tonight. like Volokita Nevenichi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you just reading it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I thought from any red cat, I'm like, what? <laughs> no, no. That would be way too specific. <laughs> Knight b7 question mark resigns. No, that's an embarrassing blunder, isn't it? Because this is obviously winning. Rook e7. That was just a huge blunder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is your car okay? Sweep needs to know. <laughs> Did you go to the car wash? Uh, 12 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I ran some errands today. I got a flu shot. Oh, that's cool. And I went to the grocery store. I got a mani pedi, and I got a car wash. Nice. Busy. Mm -hmm. I need a mani pedi. I haven't had My one since I, the, I changed um, a light bulb. Pandemic. <laughs> he did. He did. She wow. said she couldn't reach it. I, I didn't even know she tried. Yeah. I just saw the light was out. <laughs> well, that's good. It sounds like you got a lot productive the sound done bar today. Works now. That's the best thing of all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got them a sound bar for their Christmas. Yeah. And it's working now. Yeah, that is Ben Fine to Gold. <laughs> yes. It's him. Hey, Phoenix Shade. Hey, Jeff Baldwin again. 
Sorry, we finished section 45. Yeah. Next time it'll be the rook takes c3 sacrifice in the Sicilian. Okay, wow. They're... Also a common one. Mm, thank you for those entities, Purple Fay. Yay. That is a good one, Kangaroo. Who knows more SpongeBob, Kangaroo or you? He claims he does, but mm -hmm. it's hard for me to believe. How do how does anybody know more than you? Don't you know every second of SpongeBob? That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, your... you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite show ever? That's a tough one. My favorite, mm -hmm. like, cartoon? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, I have to say American Dad. More than mm -hmm. Adventure Time? Okay. Well, Adventure Time's not very high up, I would say. Oh. I, you know, maybe cracks the top five. It's pretty high up, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. yeah. All right, we did it. So do you have time to play some games or what? Uh, it depends. Looks like it. When, yeah. are, when are you going to um, be ready to stream? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to be ready to stream? I stream at 7. Okay, right at 7. All right. Then definitely. Yeah, you can get a game or two in. Sure. American Dad over Futurama. Yeah, I was thinking about Futurama when, you know, that, that was, the, that was the, the internal struggle that I was going through. What's the name of the episode I like? Is it Grandma's Kisses? The one where he vacuums yeah, I remember. up the, Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. He vacuums up the cookies with his nose. I like that. I like when they go camping, too. That's a good one. I like the scene where uh, Squidward's trying to set up his fancy tent. And then SpongeBob and he's like, take notes, you guys. Like, this is a great, you know, this is a great tent. <laughs> and so SpongeBob's like all excited about it. And Patrick's writing notes. Yeah. Such a good, such a good scene. Patrick probably writes such a pretty fun, good notes. They were the best notes. <laughs> they show his notes just for one second. It's really good. <laughs> I won't spoil it. You should just watch it. <laughs> Too funny. I'm which, laughing thinking about it. <laughs> which episode do you like better? Uh, chocolate with nuts or Krusty Towers? Krusty Towers. I definitely, I'm a big fan of Krusty Towers. And then he's like, how did you, uh, how do you have bags? You just found out this is a hotel. And Patrick's like, this is a hotel. <laughs> Kangaroo funny. says when Patrick has shown writing notes, he's actually playing. Yes, Nintendo. yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, yes. And he's like very stressed about it. He's like, oh, and he's like tic-tac-toe against himself. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, it's MJ Feingold. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's, that is a great American Dad quote. Yeah. What's the lady in the water? He's, uh, so, it's kind of hard to explain, but Roger is like a Bond villain. Mm. And he's making terrible movies so that people have to watch his movie, which is so sad that people will cry to death. <laughs> and so this is his evil plot, you know. And so uh, they figure out that, like, these movies are on purpose bad and they don't know why. Mm -hmm. So he's like, uh, you know, th th these horrible movies must be a cover for something. And then Stan's like, I don't know, sir, was Lady in the Water a cover for anything? <laughs> also being a terrible movie, but, you know, uh, not related. To it sounds like one. Yeah, it's M. Night Shyamalan. Oh. Uh. That is Uncle Mark, Yes. My Uncle Mark. I talked to my mom today, and she said she was watching The Hours. Mm -hmm. And she didn't realize until, like, 80% through the movie that the lead character was Nicole Kidman. It's mm -hmm. so like, I didn't recognize her. And I was like, what? Because, you know, they gave her, like, a big nose or something. You know? Oh, yeah. But, I, I mean, it was that. obviously her. I said uh, that a long time ago. Then she claimed I also didn't, re I didn't recognize. And I was like, all right. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. <laughs> yeah, classic Patrick. What was it? Was it a, a monkey hitting the symbols? If, I'm not 100% sure. Actually, maybe maybe he does know more than I do about it. After all. M. Night Shyamalan is the most overrated director ever. Mm hmm Oh, milk, milk falls. Right, right. That's right. It's like a carton of milk that tips over. Who said that? I so agree with you, Phoenix. Phoenix Shade, Shade, yeah. Oh my God, do I agree with you? Yeah, the banging symbols is, mm. is Simpsons, I guess, in his brain. I mean, some of his movies are so dumb. I didn't like uh, the Aliens one. I thought that one was really dumb. Take that, Spencer. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. You got me there, Kangaroo. 
Yeah, which are, what's the one with the stupid aliens? And then the girl's like drinking water and she doesn't like water or something. Michael Bay's best movie is when they made fun of it on a few, on a Family Guy. When, they when they're the throwing the stuff. The three yeah, directors. Yeah. yeah, that was a good Michael Bay movie. Yeah. And then they're they're throwing the stuff. Like they're mm-hmm. throwing barrels. They're throwing barrels of beer. Only you could throw the barrel. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Signs. Yeah, that was it. It was mm-hmm. Signs. He's the Stephen yeah. King of directors. Stephen King's Twitter is funny, though. Stephen King's an excellent writer, says Kangaroo. Yeah, you should have said James Patterson. Now, that's a terrible writer who everybody I thinks really, is good. Yeah, I didn't really read much Stephen King. Um, I did read that sh- uh, some short stories that were pretty good. Um, According to Stephen King, his next book is This Lamp is a Monster. Ooh, uh-huh. all right. Here's rawr, money. rawr. <laughs> here's money. You like early Stephen King? Oh, you have all his books? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just reading the chat. Uh, what? Who did the Da Vinci Code? They're terrible. <laughs> oh, that book was terrible. That was I read 30 pages of it or so. That was Dan Brown. That's one of the worst books ever Dan written. Brown, Thank yes. you. It was horrible. Horrible, horrible. <laughs> Anyways, I was hoping I could uh, get ready for my lesson. Um, yeah. About 10 minutes. Okay, definitely. Because we're going to end in a second. Yeah, anyway. I figured. Um, so just beat the suspenser. But don't beat him <laughs> too bad because his name's Spencer. Yeah. I I got to watch him because he's. Um, Sneaky. Yes, he is. Just like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you All right, next Spencer time. Spencer has to step out. And probably I'm, Tuesday, I guess. And, um, yeah, probably Tuesday. So it's, um, then. Let me see. Okay, so we're going to raid Ben in just a minute as we've been discussing, et cetera. I feel like I'm always stuck in here and jammed in here. You can hear Ben. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I think he was kind of groaning a little. <laughs> yeah, you can, um, I'm not going to have time for a whole lot more games, The Rock, Obama 101. I'm going to be rating Ben in a minute. But if there's time, I'll try to play you. How about that? It mm. seems like do that. It sounded like an ancient chant. I felt like I was um, not doing well until that happened. Mm. <laughs> and then I thought, well, it's looking a little better for me. <laughs> Let's see. I mainly just need to not lose on time. I think it's all good. 
the suspenser, you have a time problem like I do, obviously. Yay. Point two seconds left. <laughs> GG, this is Spencer. You're you're um slow like me. <clears throat> it's hard to speed it up, isn't it? Now let's see what people are saying. We're just gonna chat here for a second. Don't leave. We're gonna raid Ben any moment. Um <laughs> Rick Richard Bachman books are great. You like King too. Go back and analyze the game. I can try to do that with the. I need to get better with the tools. Um. Let's see my blitz rating. Oh, you. Can, I need to change that so you can see that better. My blitz rating's around eleven hundred right now. It goes up and down a bit. Um, I forgot that nobody can really see that very well. I need to change the layout, essentially. Um, does anybody know if Ben is streaming yet? Let me see. Let me see. He's really loud, but sometimes when he starts streaming, he's quiet. I don't think he is. Well, let's take a look at the game real quick then. Um, he's at the car wash. <laughs> oh, wait, I hear him talking. Let me see. All right, hang on, let me see. That could be him. We're going to raid him if it is. Darn, well, the suspenser, we can get um, the real the real Spencer <laughs> to look at our game tomorrow, the suspenser. How about that, since we didn't look, get to analyze it? Because I think Ben just started streaming. So we're going to raid him. And that's going to be it. Let me find. Let's see. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this stream today. Um, I'm going to try to stream tomorrow with Ben. So hopefully that'll happen. Um, otherwise, I'll see you Tuesday with Spencer. Let's see. G and Benjamin. Fine. Gold. Th hey, ignorant. Bye, ignorant. Did I spell that right? I did. See you guys. Bye.